Look, I get it. It's only spring ball, but it feels like not as many people are excited for this Penn State football team. People are trashing Drew Aller on social media. That's fine. That is fine. Because if you don't want to put stock into this Penn State football team, I will gladly take all of it. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. There's just a lot to be excited for when it comes to this Penn State football team, especially this season with the expanded college football playoff. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I am your host, Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers join today, and you will get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. This is essentially a spring preview going over my early thoughts on this Penn State football team heading into the 2024 season. We also have some news, some updates based on James's press conference and the first practice. We got to witness the first practice for Penn State spring football. And men's basketball is out of the Big Ten tournament. Could the season be officially over? Now, I'm not talking about the NCAA tournament or anything like that, but NIT, CBI, that's coming up in the final segment. We will begin with Penn State football and just the outlook of it, but there is a lot to be excited for in regards to this Nittany Lion team, and I just get the sense that people aren't as excited maybe in years past because expectations are going to be tempered. They went 10 and 2 again, but I'm here to say that, yes, they can contend for a Big Ten conference. Ohio State is the clear-cut favorite. Oregon's that second favorite team, but Penn State I would say is right there with Oregon. Ohio State added some key transfers, but that's not what it's about here. You have another year of Drew Aller, Nicholas Singleton, and Katron Allen. That that is your starting point. That is your core. That is your building block. You return the three best players, the three most talented players in your offense. Drew Aller. Coming out of camp winter workouts, everything else. It seems like there have been rave reviews that Drew Aller is taking officially the next step going into his true junior season. He just turned 20 years old, 20 years old, and he's drawing all this social media criticism for a first-year starter who threw 25 touchdowns to two interceptions in a Mike Yersich offense with a limited passing attack, limited options at receiver. So, But the only thing I worry about in regards to Drew is the confidence is the mental aspect of this game because he has every single other trait that pro teams and college teams look for in a quarterback, tall, large frame. We know how big he is, six foot five, 240 pounds. He can move well for that size. I'm not talking about him being a speed demon, okay? Bo Prabula is the better athlete, but for somebody built at six foot five, 240 pounds, the way that he's able to evade pass rushers, move within the pocket, move quickly, and we saw that he was viable as a runner. Everybody's big concern was that, oh, Drew's going to be a, a statue. Everybody's going to take him down in the pocket. That is not the case. On third and five, you have to account for Drew as a runner. He just moves well. He can make all the throws. You can't sit and tell me that, oh, Drew Aller doesn't have any arm talent. He's, a, he's inaccurate. He can't throw the ball deep down the field. He can make just, about, I, I would say, 99% of the throws that you need him to And he was good. He was actually decent under pressure a season ago. The pressure rate, Drew was good. So clean pocket or under duress, Drew responded very well and was still able to complete accurate passes. And he doesn't make any unnecessary turnovers. A 19-year-old starting quarterback turning 20. Two interceptions. One of them comes in the peach bowl. Drew Aller did not turn the ball over whatsoever. A first-year starter. 19 years old, and he's reading defenses right. Again, he's doing this all with an offense that just isn't helping him out that much with the elements of what Mike Yersich was, the receiving game, the offensive line wasn't perfect. It wasn't as good as we were giving them credit for on the show and just in general. But now the word out of camp is that Drew has taken a step that he has capitalized on all of this. And how many other Big Ten teams 
have a returning quarterback and a returning dynamic duo at running back. That's the other element of this. Drew is the real deal. Andy Kotelnicki was brought in to take him to the next level and bring out the best in him. But Drew can't succeed in this Penn State offense if he doesn't have, I mean, he will do well, but it helps him out when you have Nicholas Singleton and Kate Ron Allen, both of them coming back. They have all America talent, but they will never be all Americans because they split the workload. They are workhorse backs, but because they complement one another, right? They split the reps. They split the reps. They're never going to have the statistics to back that up. But another season with one of the best dynamic duos at running back in all of the country. They are truly one of the best in the nation. And these are your three most talented players, as I have mentioned. Specifically for Singleton and Allen, they allow each other to remain healthy, that longevity throughout the season. You look at the workload between the two of them. James Franklin and Jaywan Sider and Mike Yursage at the time, but Kotal Nick, he's going to follow suit. They had a split even workload when it came to usage out of the backfield. They can be used in the receiving game. They both block very well in pass pro. The This core of the offense is back, and these were sophomores, high-end four stars, five-star talent coming back for their third year of Penn State football, and three, three, a two-year starter in the case of Drew, but three-year starters, key contributors for Allen and Singleton. Then there's the switch of coordinator. Any Kuddle, Nicky, Tom Allen come in. You could not ask for better replacements at either coordinator spot. Yes, you lose the architect of a number one defense and a consistent top defense in the country for the past two seasons under Manny Diaz. And then you go and get Tom Allen. I get the concerns around him being the head coach in Indiana, and they didn't win a lot of games, but he had to act more as a CEO, especially with this NIL transfer portal craze. Indiana as an institution did not adjust, but now Tom Allen gets to go back to just coaching football and being more, yes, he'll recruit, NIL still involved, but not as much in the head coach in case he gets to focus on the defense. And Kotal Nicky's a rising star. Kotal Nicky, successful at Buffalo, successful at Kansas. Oklahoma wanted him, and Penn State was able to beat Oklahoma and other schools out to get him as the offensive coordinator. He made Kansas Jayhawk football look good. Kansas. Remember, once upon a time, not too long ago, Kansas was the laughing stock of college football and wanted to get less miles and they just never win any games. And then Andy Kotelnicki, part of that staff that's helped change Kansas football, was leading a good offense. So if Kotelnicki can do what he did with three stars at Kansas, how about four and five stars in Happy Valley? I want to mention a couple other key players here uh, quickly and then go into some of the spring football news that we got from this past week. Tyler Warren coming back and being that number one bona fide tight end and probably Drew Aller's favorite passing target of this season coming. Tyler Warren will set records. I mean that in terms of the tight end position. He will set records single season, definitely some uh, for career at tight end, because when you look at what Warren has done over his past few seasons, he's always had to split reps. Theo Johnson, Brenton Strange, they're very talented, but they all split reps and targets, snap counts with, uh, with each other. That's not the case anymore. Tyler Warren becomes a focal point in this offense. Sure, there's talent at the tight end spot, but Warren now is set alone as that clear tight end number one. And Kotal Nicky is a tight ends offensive coordinator, has a background with offensive line, tight ends. Kotal Nicky is not going to be afraid to scheme things up for Tyler Warren. Warren already has career for his career 11 receiving touchdowns i think it's a realistic pot he'll set the tight end record for career and touchdowns he might set a single season record 700 receiving yards is a very real possibility probably something in the neighborhood of 50 receptions i mean with theo johnson next to him in a mike yursich offense and warren had 34 receptions 422 yards and seven touchdowns as it was so what happens when he becomes the guy? Yeah. Then you add in Julian Fleming out of the transfer portal. You add leadership. You have more talent at the wide receiver position. I, I think the thing that's underrated above all else is the run blocking. Julian Fleming is an avid run blocker. The ground game struggled last season because the wide receivers could not block on the perimeter. Julian Fleming was the second best graded run blocker on Ohio State, and that was with the offensive lineman factored in as well. 
So Fleming in the passing game is important. I think in the running game should not go unnoticed. You, you move Abdul Carter to defensive end. You combine that with the nine Dennis Sutton. KJ Winston returns alongside Jalen Reed. And Winston is underrated. You look at the PFF grades. KJ Winston's arguably one of the better players overall on this Penn State roster. Is talked about as a future first rounder. NFL scouts already know about him. Special teams is going to be solid. I, I still think Ohio State's the best team in the country. And I hate to say that. I hate to admit it. But right now at this point in time, because of the additions they made in the transfer portal, yes, it would have been nice to go get a, a Caleb Downs. But Penn State responded and got guys like A.J. Harris and Jalen Kimber. But Caleb Downs is obviously more proven and will probably be a top 10 pick in a future NFL draft. Besides the point, Penn State has a chance to go 11-1 and one here and finish second in the Big Ten in the regular season and possibly play with now no divisions in a conference championship against, guess who, the Buckeyes here. That is a very real possibility. Oregon is there, too, because of a lot of the firepower that they have under Dan Lanning. But Penn State is in this third spot, not too far behind Oregon. There's still a clear distance with Ohio State, but they can contend. And think, hey, if the deck breaks a certain way, and things don't pan out, Ohio State and Oregon, some things change, Penn State's right there to take the reins if that does open up. Now, James Franklin did share some information, injury news. We got injury news at a press conference, right? Penn State football sharing injury news, and then some other speculation as far as who would start, who would step up in this case, and Abdul Carter switching to defensive end. What does that mean for the Nittany Lions? We're going to talk about that in just a moment here on the show. Today's episode is sponsored by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SPIC is a registered broker dealer. Today's episode is also sponsored by Amazon Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a consistent supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to the date to keep up to date with all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. You can trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. That's Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Mark your calendars for Locked On College Basketball as the Bracket Breakdown Show returns on Monday, March 18th at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to filling out a winning bracket 
and prepare for this year's NCAA basketball tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown on Monday, March 18th on Locked On College Basketball, wherever you get your podcasts, and including YouTube. Now, spring football's kicked off. James Franklin had that press conference, and we got to see a 10-15 minute viewing window for the first spring practice. I wanted to talk about the offensive line because we got key injury news regarding Drew Shelton. And this is important when Penn State is losing a franchise NFL left tackle in Olu Fashion, the best offensive lineman on the team for two seasons running, two years running, one of the most intelligent players that's going to walk on Penn State's campus. Drew Shelton is injured, had surgery at the end of the season, is going to be out for spring ball, and it, this seems like it's going to be a long-term thing. Hopefully he's fine when you know everything rolls around the regular season, but how is he going to be 100% going into week one against West Virginia and so on and so forth? But he had surgery. He was projected to be the starter at left tackle with Olu moving on. And James Franklin shared what options Penn State has. He went in depth a little bit more, named J.B. Nelson, Javen Williams, Chimney Ono, and those are the, the natural conclusions that you would make. Okay, who's going to step up next? And J.B. Nelson, I want to state right now, is your best offensive lineman at the moment. You look at PFF grades, you look how he performed when he was healthy and on the football field. Olu Fashion, who was your top offensive lineman a season ago, J.B. Nelson was number two on that offensive line. So right now, so that's a natural progression. Nelson's going to be your best offensive lineman since he's not there. Javen Williams makes sense. He was the former top offensive lineman in the 2023 class. He was the best prospect out of Pennsylvania. Did not play in the Peach Bowl. Was that injury related? What was that development related? What was that? But as the top offensive line recruit, you want him to take that next step. And this would be this would be anticipated. No Garrett Sexton. James Franklin mentioned that Drew Shelton's out. Well, Garrett Sexton won't be available either. He's injured. I, I didn't expect him to play. I expected someone like Sexton to take the red shirt, add some weight. But if James mentions him unprovoked, then that means he is, is as talented as advertised here going into his true freshman season. So look out for J.B. Nelson to possibly swing from guard to that tackle spot if Javen Williams, Chimney Ono, Alex Birchmeyer, too, are, aren't ready to step up yet. And then there's the right tackle position battle that James talked about as well. Nolan Rucci transferring in for, you know, Pennsylvania native, goes to Wisconsin, comes back home. And then Anthony Donko. As far as Rucci, because of the injury to Drew Shelton, just in terms of depth in general, that becomes that much more important of a get out of the transfer portal. He's developing well. He's added weight. He's up from 300 pounds. And James made that a point in his press conference saying that Nolan was never able to achieve a, a better weight. Maybe Wisconsin had different nutritional plans for him, but he's already added 15 pounds since being on campus for spring football. Chuck Losey and the nutritionists do not mess around. They are just different when it comes to the plan and developing these guys as athletes. And then there's Anthony Donko. If you look at the Peach Bowl, if you look at PFF, and then if you just watch the tape, Anthony Donko outperformed expectations, outperformed everybody on that Penn State team. The grades with all the available offensive linemen in that game, Anthony Donko was the best offensive lineman, had the best performance out of everybody in that Peach Bowl against Ole Miss. James mentioned that there's a possibility that he could move inside the guard, but Anthony Donko has become another diamond in the rough at offensive line. Olu Fashion was a three-star recruit. Anthony Donko was a three-star recruit. And look at how quickly each of them have developed. There's parallels here. I'm not saying that Donko is going to be a franchise left tackle in the NFL one day, but to see him develop this quickly and to factor in being a starter going into the next season, his second year with the program, is impressive. I do want to mention Cooper Cousins as well. This is someone that I've already mentioned on the show. James Franklin reiterated that he can play any of the spots, left tackle, right tackle, guard, center. It doesn't matter. He can play anywhere. He already comes in with college football ready size. He is not going to redshirt. He he could he could be a starter. He really could, but he is definitely going to factor into the rotation. So if he's not a starter, he's going to factor in and play significant snaps as a backup. If I had to project a starting five right now for the offensive line at this point in time, you know, mid-March, a lot of things can change when people are available in the fall. I would put J.B. Nelson at left tackle. 
I would put Anthony Donko at, at left guard. Nick Dawkins starts at center as the veteran. Sal Wormley returns. And then Nolan Rucci is your right tackle. That would be your starting five at an offensive line. Still a slight concern because of the uncertainty. Is there talent in this group? Absolutely. But losing Olu Fashionu, this line was not great last season. They were bare. I, I would say they were slightly above average, but they fell short of expectations. And then you lose your top three offensive line from that group. Abdul Carter recruited as a defensive end. I thought this was interesting. James pointed out that Carter was, the Penn State was recruiting him as a defensive end originally. And, and Carter and, and his parents said, no, he's a linebacker. And he ended up committing as a linebacker. But Abdul wanted to make this move. Carter wanted to move from linebacker to defensive end. You're losing two pro-level starting defensive ends here with Chop Robinson, who definitely should go in the first round, and Adisa Isaac, who I believe is a day two pick. But we'll, we'll see how the scouts truly believe what he is. He's definitely he's going to get drafted, I would say, probably no later than the fourth round with the production that he's had coming back and returning from his injury. But... Going and this is you know this helps by going to practice. Abdul Carter just looks he just looks bigger. He just he just looks like he's added that defensive end weight and that size. He just looks that much taller and stronger. But Carter could always move back to linebacker. He's not permanently at defensive end. Seeing if this project doesn't work out or anything, or if they just need him elsewhere, they can move him around. They can do a variety of things with him because he's just a talented football player. At the end of the day. He's currently listed at 250 pounds. They said he could add 10 more and move up to 260. That would be ideal with his speed already and, and just the natural gift of getting after the quarterback, whether that's stand up as a linebacker or hand in the dirt as a defensive end. As far as practice ob observation goes, there's not too much insight here because I do want to remind everybody that we get 10 to 15 minutes with these, with these viewing windows. So it's status quo. Drills are plain. They're not going to show too much, and that's fine. I, I will say this. I like, I, it's hard to not like the way that Andy Kotelnicki just commands the practice. He offers a different energy level. He, he's very assertive. He's not afraid to call anybody out for, for small things, for big things. And again, you, only so much in this 10 to 15 minute window here. But I just like the way that he ran the drills, took command of the, pra uh, of the practice from what we saw briefly, but any Kotal Nick, he just brings, he, he seems like again, and, and you should as a division one football coach, you should love your sport. You should love the players that you're working with and coaching. And Andy Kotal Nicky, I think ha has brought a different attitude to Penn state. And that was the first thing that stood out when you stand on the sideline and watch what is going on with the Penn state football team. So if that jumps out to me in a 10 minute window, it's obviously very telling what Kotal Nicky is going to do for Penn State going into this season. Men's basketball is done. Well, maybe because the NIT, the the CBI could could they be in could they still be playing in the postseason, but they are now out of the Big 10 tournament after losing to Indiana in a heartbreaking loss. That's coming up next and we'll discuss it more and recap it on Locked On Nittany Line. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. How about the Utah State Aggies? They are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. This team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the, Ag the Aggies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. That is NissanUSA.com. The Locked On Podcast Network is making history. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, and now you can find it available in the free Fire TV channels app. In this final segment, 
Penn State men's basketball loses to Indiana, could not repeat Indiana the way they did Illinois a season ago, losing 61 to 59. This was a winnable game. Penn State definitely should have won this game, but let's let's recap it here. It's a heartbreaking loss. Indiana makes a, a basket in the final five seconds, and Penn State at Puff Johnson just front of the rim could not get the three pointer to go. It is tough to beat a team three times in a season. Any any sport, uh, baseball baseball is a little different because they play so many games. But we see you know foot, the likes of football. If you play a division rival three times, you go into the postseason. The reason Penn State lost this game, awful shooting, just awful. Indiana's defense has really cracked down. Mike Woodson has made some adjustments, and I knew Indiana was going to be better going into this tournament. I thought they had a favorable path. But it that's it, two things can be true. The Hoosiers can make adjustments and be better and be tougher. And Adam and I, special guest on the show, the Men's Basketball Insider, pointed that out. 27% from the field is not going to get it done. That wasn't from three-point range. Granted, they shot 25% from three, but 27% from the field is just atrocious in a must-win game. Fouls were even at 20 apiece, but Penn State did not have the depth to recover. Or didn't it? Because I, I feel like Penn State and Mike Rhodes handcuffed itself here. I, I was scratching my head wondering what is going on with the rotation here. Nick Kern, Kudus Wahab, Puff Johnson. Now, granted, Kern and Wahab fouled out in this game, but Puff Johnson had four fouls as well. So they had to be very careful. And Indiana was able to get easier buckets down the stretch because you couldn't play as aggressive a defense. But where's Raekwondis Mitchell? Leo Boyle, Faber Ira, Jamil, Jamil Brown, anybody. Because all of these guys ended up, aside from Faber Ira, any of these other guys were playing four to six minutes when you needed them in this game because you got into foul travel. I totally understand wanting to play your best players. Heck, Ace Baldwin played another 40-minute game. It was a must-win situation. But when your guys are in foul trouble, Nick Kern fouled out with six minutes to go. He had his fifth foul with six minutes of crucial play to go when the game was close. The game was always tight. Penn State ended up taking a couple basket lead, and then Indiana felt like they were in control the remainder of the game. But your second best defender, second to ace Baldwin, was fouled out at that point. Kudus Wahab, who's the answer to Khalil Ware, your only answer, your only option, and I'll get to Demetrius Lindley in a second, then he fouls out. But I feel like the rotation was not used properly in this case. You had three foul, you had three starters in serious foul trouble. I get it. It's winner go home, but you had the bench to back it up. Other times, Leo Boyle's playing 15, 20 minutes. I know Indiana's a different matchup here, but then there is the Demetrius Lilly element to it. Demetrius Lilly, this injury cannot be overlooked. And it's not his fault. I'm not saying that it's anybody's fault. Injuries happen here, but don't underestimate the value that Lilly offered coming off of the bench, developing Mike Rhodes, convincing him to stay, and then turning into the basketball player that he is coaching him up right to allow Kudus Wahab to be used effectively. But Lilly was an excellent player off the bench all season, and him sustaining that injury held Penn State back down the stretch of the season, the regular season, and then into the postseason, then a Big Ten tournament. It hindered them. They should have beaten Indiana a third time. The game was that close. It came down to a final basket in the final seconds, but they just could not close out any of these games. And that's what's so disappointing. That's what's so disappointing. This Penn State team, we will never know how good it could have been if, what, Kanye Clary leaves the team earlier in the season or they just make a different rotation because they played him so much and then you find out injury taken out of the lineup briefly and Penn State all of a sudden gets better as a group but then they can't close the games out against Iowa Minnesota and now Indiana part three when they should have won a lot more games this season that they didn't this team was talented this team was better without Kanye Clary believe it or not NIT, National Invitational Tournament, College Basketball Invitational. Could Penn State be eyed by either of those tournaments? Absolutely, they could. Absolutely. The NIT going to be a little more difficult now because the record's under 500. They have that Bucknell loss. Uh, the CBI seems to take some more mid-majors in this case. I don't know. It depends what Penn State wants to do. But they had 
an incredible season. And I'll have more of a full season recap and most likely invite Adam Sheets back on the show. I don't want to speak for him just yet, but definitely have a full season recap to talk about the strengths and then preview what's to come for them going into next season, what they need to do. But this team shined. They outperformed expectations when the experts, the experts said that this team was going to finish 14th in the Big Ten. Yeah, they finished 11th, but they were my, but they were only a couple of games away from finishing in the middle of the pack, something along the lines of 7th or 8th, and they were in the thick of it for those other games. So hats off. The Mike Rhodes era is off to a great start, and Penn State fans should feel good about this basketball program moving forward. If you like this show, if you like what we do here on Locked on Nittany Lines, like this episode, share it with friends and family. Let, in the, let me know in the comments what you think about Penn State football going into spring season, men's basketball, the program, how it's moving forward, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Become an everydayer and wherever you get your podcasts as well. And for more Penn State sports content, talking more than just football on the show, men's basketball, wrestling, men's hockey, recruiting, all of it is right here on Locked on Nittany Lines.